Hello, my name is Sammy Saab and I'm a hepatologist at a UCLA and I've been in practice for about 20 years. During those 20 years, we've seen a number of infections come and go and today we're going to talk about COVID-19. This is as you know in the news every single day and many of us have many questions about COVID-19, particularly how it affects us and our loved ones. So first of all, why do we care about COVID-19? COVID-19 is a very serious infection that affects the lungs, and as a result, it causes lung failure, requiring intubation and being on ventilator support. In addition, it's an important cause of people dying. And you see reports from China and Italy, just to name a few, that we're seeing reports of infection increasing and people dying as well. Now, the problem with COVID-19 is that it's a new virus. As a result, there is no natural immunity that we are aware of. Secondly, because of new infection, we don't have any vaccines yet. And the timeline appears to be another year before we have a vaccine. And thirdly, because of new viral infection, we don't have today any approved specific antiviral therapy. So the best treatment today is supportive care of someone sick, and prevention, which we'll talk about very shortly. Now, people um, in my practice are asking me all the time, what does COVID-19 mean to me? Well, if you have cirrhosis, there is concern that you may be more susceptible to viral infections. And if you do get infected, there may be a chance you might be sicker than a common person. I specifically worry about three groups when we talk about COVID-19. The first one are patients with autoimmune liver disease. These individuals with autoimmune liver disease are made particularly at risk for taking medication that suppress their immune system. So by definition, they are immunocompromised. So these medications, as you know, retrain your immune system not to attack the liver, but it does put people at risk of infections. The second group of individuals that I worry about are those individuals who had a liver transplantation these liver transfer recipients take immunosuppressive therapies lifelong. And as a result, they may be at greater risk of being infected. And potentially, if they are infected, they have a greater chance of having more severe disease. And the third group of individuals I worry about are people with liver cancer who are receiving chemotherapy or immune modulated treatments. To, track to, to treat the liver cancer. As a result, these individuals may also be susceptible to COVID-19 viral infection, and if they get infected, to have a more severe outcome. Now, another group of individuals that we need to pay attention are the elderly with liver disease. And unfortunately, many liver problems like fatty liver, hepatitis B, take decades, decades to cause problems. So as a result, many individuals who have cirrhosis of fatty liver, cirrhosis of hepatitis B are elderly individuals. And if we see both the young and old could be infected by COVID-19, no one's immune, no one's protected, but it perhaps with a higher chance of having severe outcomes in the elderly individuals. So I'm also concerned about a number of consequences. One is liver transplantation. Now, many transplant centers have expressed concern about transplanting right now, not just liver, but other organs as well, from people from home. So because we're concerned about patients in the home being exposed to COVID-19 and not knowing it. Well, if someone gets get transplanted for, with COVID-19 and we didn't know about this, after transplant, the infection could blossom and potentially lead to a very fatal outcome. The other group of individuals that I'm also very concerned about are those individuals who have stable liver disease, may be exposed to COVID-19, and the COVID-19 can make your liver test worse. Fortunately, from the data we've seen, this might be a temporary and transient problem. So, how do we protect ourselves from COVID-19? Well, we have a number of very good organizations like the CDC and the American Society of Transplantation 
and the Merkler Foundation have provided some guidance on these issues. Right now, we believe the best treatment is prevention. Avoid unnecessary travel, wash your hands for 20 seconds, avoid large crowds, and that number has been decreased to 10 people today. So this may impact weddings, funerals, get-togethers, um, restaurants, coffee shops, and also practice social distance. And the magic number is six feet. Now this magic number six feet come from what we know about air droplets. We believe COVID-19 is spread through air droplets and they should not travel more than six feet. Now, during the time when we were doing this talk, we received some questions um, from members of the American Liver Foundation. And one of the questions is, if I have liver disease, should I be concerned? And the answer is, we should all be concerned. But particularly concerning will be if individuals with autoimmune liver disease, people with liver transplantation, people who are being treated for liver cancer, because their immune system is substantially compromised and they're more risk of having infection and a serious outcome. So patient cirrhosis, particularly those who are elderly, may also be a risk. So very important for everybody, please practice preventive medicine. Um, the second question is, what does social distancing look for liver patients? What does it look like? Well, the social distance is the same for everybody. It's six feet. And we believe that, that air droplets cannot really go past six feet. So make sure you practice your social distancing. Um, I've seen college students stretch their hands out like this and, and to estimate the six feet uh, rule. Uh, the, another question is wearing masks. Right now the CDC the, does, not, um, does not recommend wearing masks. Um, they believe that the other measures should be sufficient uh, to prevent infection. So right now it's not recommended to wear a mask. Uh, if you go to a crowded area on a, on a bus, a, a subway, you know, it may not be a bad idea um, because it's hard to practice social distance in these areas where populations are more dense. Uh, another question that's come up uh, is, is there a difference between immunosuppressed and immunocompromised? Um, Loosely speaking, um, they're really one and the same. Um, basically, these terminologies refer to people's immune system not functions full capacity. As a result, we may be at more risk of being infected. And uh, by the same token, if we're infected, also a higher chance of having more severe infection um, and disease. Remember, it's between infection and disease. Infection means you've been exposed to the virus. Disease means you're having symptoms. And the symptoms, as you know, include those flu-like symptoms, runny nose, sore throat, shortness of breath, uh, muscle pain, and joint pain. So at this point, I want to thank you for, for listening to this short segment um, put forth by the American Liver Foundation on COVID-19 and for people with liver diseases. Uh, will be available, of course, if there are any other questions, just email them to the American Life Foundation and we'll be happy to answer them as best we could. Enjoy and please be safe. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.